Right? So you need a negative y over r because the sine of theta is equal to y over r, where y, you know, you got to pick a point somewhere around here. You're going to have an x comma y, and the r will be the distance between the origin. So uh, what does that mean? Where, where will you find a negative sign? How will this be negative? If it's a Okay, and what about R? Do you remember what I said about R? Nope. R is always positive. Okay, so if it's positive, so y, is so y has to be negative. Where's Y negative? Um, um, two. Wait, which one? Yeah. Two and three. Y is negative. So, we, just on that one piece of information, we know we're talking about quadrant three or quadrant four. Cosine needs to be negative, right? That's what this says. Is well, what's another? Oh, it's less than zero. Okay. Are other numbers that are less than zero are negative, right? Okay. Okay. And if we pick a point on the in the plane somewhere with an x and a y and an r, x and y being you know x comma y and r being the distance to the origin, then and if r is always positive, either y or x is going to be negative. Well, both have to be negative. Sign's going to be negative. No, no, then no. But I'm saying like R is never going to be negative. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. I see what you're saying. You're right. Uh, what's my next quadrant? Forty-one is next. Hey, can you want? Forty-one. Yeah. Forty-one. Yeah. Yeah. is 
larger angle right here, then this is your reference angle. This is what we call theta, this is what we call theta prime. Theta prime would be the reference angle. It's always the, the angle between the terminal side of theta, of your given angle, this being the given angle, in this case, 5 pi over 3. Uh, so the terminal side of theta and the nearest, nearest what? Horizontal. horizontal. Nearest horizontal. So for that reason, you can, you can see that it's always going to be this angle is between 0 and 90. There's no way to get an angle bigger than 90 by that definition. I always think it's between the terminal side and the nearest horizontal. Okay. So it's all, the reference angle is always going to be this, this angle that would, would go in the first quadrant, and we'll use it as sine and its cosine and so on uh, to find the sine and the cosine uh, tangent and, and all that, which is the original angle. Our original angle in this particular problem is 5 pi over 3. Let's, let's, where's 5 pi over 3? Where's pi over 3? Oh, right that's like here, right? Mm -hmm. It's a third of the way to pi. So here's pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3 simplified, that's pi, that's where we're at right now. Uh, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So the reference angle is between this side and where? Left. subtract pi over 3 to get to pi, pi over 3, right? But we don't want to, we don't usually don't like to set up things that way, right? Like the, you want to turn into a set, uh, JJD? No, we just don't want to say, uh, this is what I would subtract. We'd like to say, take this number, subtract this number, that's the number you want to find, right? Instead of saying, what number would I subtract? Okay. Kind of the same. Uh, so let's set it, kind of set it up the way you said. Uh, 2 pi is all the way around, and if we subtracted what we're looking for, we would find 5 pi over 3. Right? Yeah. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So that if we solve for this guy, we'll subtract 5 pi over 3 from both sides, we'll add uh, theta prime to both sides, so we get 2 pi minus the angle will give us the angle we're looking for. Right? That's what I'm saying. We want to like have two known measures equal the unknown quantity. So that would be, like you said, 6 pi over 3, Minus 5 pi over 3 is pi. There it is. There's the reference angle. So right there. You'll notice that when you find these reference angles, if you draw them both in the same place, they'll be either mirror images of each other, whether they be vertical or horizontal mirror images, or straight across from each other if you have an angle that's in quadrant 3. In any case, the ratio of uh, like how far up they go versus how far over they go is going to be the same, only sometimes it'll be negative. The, re the ratio of how far over you go versus how uh, far the point is from the origin will be the same. Sometimes it'll be negative. Though. That's the, that's the point. So pi over 3 has the same sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant as 5 pi over 3, only sometimes they give you by a sine. Here in the first quadrant, cosines are positive, sines are positive, tangents are positive, right? Everything's positive over in the first quadrant. But in the fourth quadrant, uh, sine, what's 
sign is positive or negative? Uh, mm, negative, mm. because sine is y over r, and down in the fourth quadrant, what kind of y's do we have? Negative one. Negative one. So you have negative y over positive r, you get negative. The cosines, what are those, positive or negative? Negative. Positive. It's going to be positive because cosine is x over r, and x is positive over here. Tangent. Negative. It's going to be negative because we have y over x. y is negative, x is positive, so tangent is going to be negative. And of course, the cosecant then will be negative, secant is positive, cotangent is negative. I say all this because I'm pretty sure I'm not wasting my time because they want to sign those things. Nope, they don't. <laughs> well, they will sometimes. Um, but that's why we find reference angles in the first place. This is what they wanted. They, we sketch 5 pi over 3, we sketch pi over 3. Those are the, that's the, the angle in the reference manual. If they ask us then to find sine, cosine, and tangent, we would use this information to figure out. pi over 4, right? Because this is pi. Oh, yep. So if we take 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4, we get pi over 4. <coughs> so theta prime is this guy right here. And you'll notice they're mirror images of each other across the y-axis. Here's the angle we want, right, between the terminal side and the nearest horizontal. So 225 45. minus 180 gives us this. It's 45. So it's 45. So our reference angle is 45. So 45 degrees is our reference angle. This is how we find it without a calculator. Uh, here the sine, cosine, tangent, all those guys, all those are positive. But here the sine is what? So if we know the sine of 45, okay, that's going to equal the negative, uh, well, say the negative of the sine of 45 is equal to the sine of 225. So what's the sine of 45? Negative of the cosine of 45 okay. is the same thing. That's also the cosine of 225. Obviously, this guy's the same thing. Squared root of 2, negative square root of 2. The tangent of 45 yeah. is 1, and that's equal to the tangent of 225. They're both positive. So it's 225 is 1. Reference angle is 60. It's 60, yeah, 60 degrees away. We can also think of it 
360 minus 300 and gives us a 60 degree for the reference angle. So here's our reference angle in the first quadrant. 60 degrees. Okay, well that's sine, cosine, tangent, all the crazy. Positive here, the sine is what? Positive or negative? Negative. Yeah, negative y is the sine is y over r. Sine is negative cosine. So if we take the sine of 60 and we make it negative, that will give us the sine of 300. And sine of 60 is? Negative square root of 3 over 2. If we take just the cosine of 60, don't make it negative, just straight the cosine of 60. Sine of 300 is 1 half. Tangent 60 is the negative tangent of 60. Okay, 62. 10 pi over 3. Where is that? Quadrant 1, 2, or 3? We're not sure. Okay, let's find out. Where's pi over 3? Here, a third of the way. So <coughs> pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 gets us all the way to pi. 4, 5, 6 pi over 3. Oh, just like 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah. So what I'm saying is um, that original, all the oh, way around in there, right, we subtract 2 pi, we'll find the coterminal angle, this angle right here. Oh, so I should have written this. Oh, okay. So uh, 10 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, that'll be 4 pi over 3. Now we've got an, a uh, an angle that's in inside of So at 4 pi over 3, how do we find the reference angle? Here's 4 pi over 3, in case you missed it. Right there, the third quadrant. How do we find the here? What's that? Oh, sorry. Um, you subtract 3 pi, or 4 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3. Yes. You got 4 pi over 3. You can subtract 3 pi over 3, because that's pi, right? This half the circle is pi. We're going to subtract that half. We use pi over 3 as our reference angle. It is straight across. It goes up and over just as much as this does over here. So it goes down. This one goes <coughs> pi over 3. Positive, positive, positive. That's right here. The sign is? Um, oh, sine is negative. Sine is negative. Cosine? Negative. Negative. Tangent. Positive. So the negative sine of pi over 3 is equal to the sine of 4 pi over 3, and that is negative 3 over 3 over 10. Cosine, the negative cosine of pi over 3 is equal to the cosine of 4 pi over 3, and that is negative 1 half. Tangent of pi over 3 is the tangent of 4 pi over 3.
sign to be a, well, basically a positive. Where are the signs positive? Um, one and two. Yeah. One and two up here. Right, because it's Y over R. tells us that our x value is going to be what? Negative. 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 negative x value. Can we find what that x value is? Four. All right, Four. x squared plus 2 squared equals 5 Four. squared. Four. x squared equals 25 minus 4. x equals plus or minus the square root of 21. Is it going to be plus or is it going to be minus? Minus, minus because... degree. Cotangent uh, theta is negative 5. Okay. Cotangent is what ratio? x over y, right, so it's x over y, that means that either x is negative or, or y is negative. It would have to be 1 and 4. 1 or 4. So one, 2 or 4. 2 or 4. 2 or 4. Right. One has to be positive and the other negative. They can't be both negative, they can't be both positive. So based on this information, either we're here or we're here. Okay. So since this is x over y, we can think of this as negative 5 over 1. So this could be negative 5. information, they do, they tell us the sign has to be greater than zero. Where is the sign greater than zero? Up here, not here.
Joseph did. Challenge is just knowing how to tell your calculator if that's what you want to tell you. Um, well, it doesn't have a cosecant button, right? So use the inverse. One over, one over sine. One over Two. sine. Do not use the inverse. Yeah, that's what we should have used. Uh, uh, negative 8 pi over 9. Use the inverse. <coughs> You'll know why it doesn't make any sense to use the inverse. is different from sine to the negative. Uh, so the next thing is the calculator needs to know what? Radian. Radian. So we go to mode. We are in radian mode. And so negative 2.9338. Two solutions of the equation give your answers in degrees and radians. Between zero and <laughs> so somewhere in a full rotation, you're supposed to find two solutions to this equation. So the solution would be the thing that fills in the unknown. We don't know what theta is. We can figure out a theta that works in this equation. The cosine of that theta is root two over two. That would be a solution. So what what angle would work? 90, then the cosine of root 2 over 2? No, 45. 45. Oh, yeah, because I'm at 90. Yes, 45 as a cosine of root 2 over 2. So that works. Uh, which is okay in radians, it's pi over 4. Okay, is there another angle that has a cosine of root 2 over 2? 315. What's it? 315. 315, that's so 45. or probably something for pi over 4, right? Yep. Seven pi over 4. Yep. The cosine of theta equals negative root 2 over 2. Where are the cosines negative? 135. 135? circle before, but learn it again. 
layer that learning on top of previous learning, several layers of learning. Yay! Good. The reason I put 4.2 after 4.4 is because it makes more sense. Because uh, we've already uh, talked about it in here, but other orders are going to make more sense. Because in 4.4, we talked about angles around the circle, you know, all this kind of stuff. And now when we use a unit circle, we just kind of bring it into a one special case. It's a special case because the unit circle is a circle where the radius is one unit. One inch, one mile, one light year, it doesn't matter. It's one thing, one unit. Okay. And that's very convenient because when we let the radius be one, and we talk about, say, a point right here, well, its radius is also one. Wherever you draw from the center to the edge, it's always one. Uh, so that's R. This is X and Y. So when we talk about the sine, and the sine of the angle is equal to Y over R, uh, well, what's R? It's one. one, so the sine is just Y, because R is one. Y over one is just Y. So this is just the sine of theta. Cosine is x over r, and again, r is 1, so x is the cosine of theta. So we're going to have <coughs> such a circle. Uh, all of those labels would be not just x comma y, but cosine comma sine. Yes, is that? No. fill in just a, a few values on this unit circle, um, like at 30 degrees. So obviously we see here, the first thing is the cosine, what's the cosine of 30? The cosine of 30. Sign except for which one would be negative? Uh, <coughs> the cosine would be negative. 103 <coughs> over 2 and 1 half. Well, if we came over here to uh, 220 degrees, it's also 30 degrees off the horizontal, just like this one, just like this one. So it's going to have the same sine and cosine except for both, both are negative. If I come over here to 330 degrees, it's 30 degrees up the horizontal, just like this, just like this, just like this. Root 3 over 2 is positive, 1 half is negative. If we get it to 30, we can do 45, 60, 90. Okay, let's talk about 90. Real good. 90. What would 
speed, right? These are just the coordinates of the points that are on the on the circle, right? <coughs> the x comma y that happened because of our choice of r being one. You get sine and cosine out of it. So what's the x of this point? Zero. Yeah. And what is the y? One. 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 So we know it goes the full length of the radius. The radius is one. So zero comma one. And so this would be. One comma zero. So when we get all done, we're all gonna die. We get all done, we're not gonna die, we're just gonna have a unicircle. Which is all of these values? No, not that. The second one. They flipped it around. Goodness. So confusing. Shouldn't you know your thingamajigger? I don't think it matters if I know it. Okay, so those are the sign values. So we can see the sign repeats itself. Now it needs to be periodic. Okay. So when do we see the sign of one half coming? Coming back to us in so periodic. Directly across. Why is it? Uh, over here. Mirrored on the other side. The sign is one half again over here. Now the only problem with that is, I mean, it's true that the sign is one half, but do you see how if we include this one, like this is a rotation of how many degrees? 120 degrees. Okay, but then we don't. It doesn't happen again in another hundred. So we kind of don't don't look at that. A third. Yeah, but then like down here that doesn't work because it's negative one half. It works positive one half. So how about if we just say, okay, it, at a period of a full rotation, if I go all the way around, I'll find one half, <coughs> one half again, one half again. Okay, it happens for this one too. Go around one half, one half, or go around a full rotation. comes up every 360 degrees, we get the same sign every time, right? And if we go 360 more degrees, we'll find it again and again. So, uh, sine is periodic because the sine of theta is equal to the sine of theta if you add 360 degrees times you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 rows, which is 2 rows, which is 3 rows, which is 4 rows, which is 3 rows. You begin Fill in n with any whole number we want. One, two, three, four, negative two, negative five, negative six, any integer. Uh, and they'll be the same thing. Both of these will be the same. Okay? 
That's the definition of a periodic function. A periodic function, more in general, looks like this. Cosine root 3 over 2, go around 360, root 3 <coughs> over 2, root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. Okay? Degrees of n. So it's periodic. Check. Check. What about the tangent? Yeah. Tangent. Now it is true that we could just say plus 360. Obviously, we're just going to get the x plus 1 minus 1. But here's the idea. Uh, okay, so the, the tangent of this is just, we don't have to worry about too much the exact value. It's 1 half over root 3 over 2. Right? And that's positive. Right? What if we go just 180 degrees away and we get negative 1 half over negative root 3 over 2? Which is the same. It's also positive. Okay. We so come around up 180 degrees. There we are, Matt. So it's 180 n. Yeah, 180 n. Theta. It has a smaller period. It repeats every Take the tangent of some angle and you go 100 and 180 degrees away from that, you'll find the same tangent. Works over here too. We get a negative tangent, we go 180 degrees, we get the same negative tangent. Periodic nature of sine and plus cosine and tangent. Okay, one more thing. That's hilarious. Talk about even functions and odd functions. An even function <laughs> works like this. The y value of f sub x, or f of x, is equal to f of negative x. Whether we go positive angle or negative angle, we should get the same whatever. Right? If we get the same thing, that would be called an even function. So let's see. Here's positive 60, okay? Where's negative 60? Down here, yeah, if you go down to where 3 is close to over 300. So whether we go positive 60 or negative 60, we have the same, same sign or same cosine. So is the cosine of 60 degrees yeah. equal the cosine of negative 60 degrees. Yeah. Yes, is the cosine of any angle equal to the cosine of the negative of that angle? Uh -huh. Yes. It works all the time, right? Every time. We can go here to positive 30, down here to negative 30, both have a cosine of root 3 over 2. Go here to 135. Or negative 135, they have the same cosine, negative root 2 over 2. So the cosine is what we call an even function. How about let's look at the sine. If we go to positive 30, what's the sine? 1 half. If we go to negative 30, what's the sine? So they're opposite. That's right. So for sine, the sine of theta is equal to Sine of theta equals the, the sine of negative theta? What is it equal to? Negative sine of theta is equal to, is equal to sine of negative theta, or sine of equal, theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Can I just use the interruption? Paul Watley, please come to the high school office. Paul Watley, sit on our school office. Okay, let's look at tangent. It'll be the last one to decide is even or odd. Okay, so we go to positive 30. The tangent of 30 is 1 half over root 3 over 2. No 
we'll come down to negative 30. The tangent of negative 30 is negative 1 half <coughs> over root 3 over 2. Are they the same? Are they different? They're different. How are they different? Uh, one's negative, one's positive. One's negative is positive. Otherwise, they're the same. Right? 1 half over root 3 over 2. One's positive, one's negative. So which is it, even or odd? Even, if they're even, they are the same. They are exactly the same as each other. So it's opposite. If they're odd, they are opposites. Right? This is positive, this one's negative. So the tangent, the tangent of theta is equal to the negative tangent of negative theta. They're opposites of each other. Okay, so in general, Questions? Feel free. I'll now pass out some unit circles. Yeah. You've decided, you decided that you can, on this unit circle or a unit circle from the past, because it's all the same thing, you can fill up the front and use that. Okay? On test? Yes. yes. So if you want to write sine is equal to y over r and x is, and cosine is equal to x over r, all those things, so if it's all that all that stuff. You can write it all down on the front side of this one, not a different one, not when you download it from Google Images, not that one, not any one, but this one or what I've already given you in previous years. Okay, understand? Because the real estate is taken up as much as I want it to take up. If you do a tiny one, and then try to fill up that the rest of that space with the, all that other stuff, no thank you, I won't, I won't like that. Oh god, don't write your name there, guys. Yeah, that's, that's